Welcome back to CBS This Morning. The surge in new COVID cases is putting an enormous strain on hospitals across the country. At Belleville Medical Center, that's outside Houston, Texas, patients needing an ICU bed are being airlifted to hospitals in other states. But finding an open bed there is often difficult, too. It's a struggle that can have life or death consequences. Our lead national correspondent, that's David Begno, is in Belleville with more on this story. David, good morning to you. Good morning. The next time you hear somebody say that the COVID crisis is affecting non-COVID patients, remember the name Daniel Wilkinson. He was a U.S. Army veteran. In fact, the military flag still fly right here on the front porch of his home in Belleville. He started feeling sick last weekend. He lives just an hour and a half down the road from Houston, where they have some of the best medical care in the world. And he lives within yelling distance of the local hospital. But none of that was enough when he started feeling sick and couldn't get the medical care he needed to survive. This was U.S. Army veteran Daniel Wilkinson on an emergency room stretcher shortly before he died. He loved his country. He, he served two deployments over in Afghanistan, came home with a purple heart, and it was a gallstone that took him out. Last Saturday, Wilkinson's mother, Michelle Puget, rushed him to Belleville Medical Center, just three doors down from their home. But for Wilkinson, help was still too far away. I do labs on him, I get labs, and the labs come back, and I'm at the computer, and I have one of those oh crap moments. ER doctor Hassan Kakli treated Wilkinson, and he discovered that he had gallstone pancreatitis, something the Belleville Hospital was not equipped to treat. If that stone doesn't spontaneously come out and doesn't resolve itself, that fluid just builds up, backs up into the liver, backs up into the pancreas, and starts to shut down those organs. His blood work even showed that his kidneys were shutting down. This went from life-threatening to... He's dying. In front of you? Yes. Wilkinson needed a higher level of care, but with hospitals across Texas and much of the South overwhelmed with COVID patients, there was no place for him. We're making phone calls. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Places had the specialist to do the procedure, but because of how sick he was, they didn't have an ICU bed to put him. So then I'm, I'm at my computer and I'm just like scratching my head. I'm like, and I get this thought in my head. I'm like, oh, what if I put this on Facebook or something? Maybe somebody can help out. One doc messaged me, hey, I'm in Missouri. Last time I checked, we have ICU beds. We can do this, call, call this number. The next guy messages me. He's a GI specialist. He goes, I'm in Austin. I can do his procedure, get him over to me. I said, okay, great, let's go. He texts me back five minutes later. I'm sorry, I can't get administrative approval to accept him, we're full. For nearly seven hours, Wilkinson waited in this bed. I had that thought in my head is like, I need to get his mother here right now. I told her, I said, if he doesn't get this procedure done, he is going to die. I also had to have the, the discussion with him. Dan, I said, if your heart stops in front of me right here, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to do everything we can to resuscitate you and try and get your heart back? And I said, if that were to happen, Dan, if I were to get you back, we're still in that position where we're in right now. What did you say? He said, I want to talk to my mom about that. Finally, a bed opened up at the VA hospital in Houston. It was a helicopter ride away. He goes, oh man, I promised myself after Afghanistan I would never be in a helicopter again. And he goes, oh well, I guess. This is video of Daniel being airlifted to Houston, but it was too late. They weren't able to do the procedure on him because it, it had been too long. And told me that they had seen air pockets in his intestines, which means that they were already starting to die off. So they told me that I had to make a decision. And I knew how Danny felt. He didn't want to be that way. So we were all in agreement that we had to let him go. Roughly 24 hours after he walked into the emergency room, Daniel Wilkinson died at the age of 46. I've never lost a patient from this diagnosis. Never because we know what needs to be done and we know how to treat it and we get them to where they need to go. I'm scared that the next patient that I see is someone that I can't get to where they need to get to. We are playing musical chairs with 100 people 
and 10 chairs. When the music stops, what happens? People from all over the world come to Houston to get medical care. And right now, Houston can't take care of patients from the next town over. That's the reality. Dr. Cackley says if we weren't in this crisis, it would have taken him 30 minutes to get Daniel out the door. It took seven hours. There are 102 people in the Houston area waiting for an ICU bed right now. And I called the county executive, Judge Lena Hidalgo, and I said, Judge, can you not open a field hospital and put these people somewhere? And she said, David, I can and I'm ready. But she said, what I'm hearing from the hospital executives are, we have more beds, we just don't have the nurses. They got 700 nurses that arrived in Houston last week. And it's still not enough to meet the demand. Mm. Vlad? Absolutely heartbreaking, David Begno. Absolutely heartbreaking. Thank you very much. David Begno and Dr. Cackley really painted a picture. It's another part of the COVID story that you don't often think about. The people that we're losing because they they don't have the, the space, they don't have the personnel to treat them. And yeah. that's, that's outrageous. It's why it's so important when people say, you should wear a mask, yes. or you should socially distance, or get or vaccinated. you should get a vaccine. It's because it affects all of us. Yes. That's also why the death toll from COVID is not just the number of people who die with the virus. It's Very all those point. people beyond yeah. it who are not getting the help they need. You survive a war only to die in your own country because of a gallstone. For something that you didn't have to, exactly, for something you didn't have to die from. All right, David, thank you very much again.